Welcome to DFT Code Word YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to learn about the electronic band structure calculations in Quantum Espresso. There are two ways to compute the electronic band structures in Quantum Espresso. Uh, the first way is to uh, provide the summering in SCF file. What is summering? We will have a detailed discussion about summering in our preceding videos. Uh, summering is basically the occupation of electrons in a system. So the first method is uh, the, the smearing in scf.in file and the second one is without smearing in scf.in file. So the first method with, with smearing in scf.in file, we basically have four steps to complete the electronic band structures calculations. Uh, the first one is scf.in file with smearing in it is as an input in this file. Uh, this this will be run with the help of pw.x program and the second one is the bands dot in and bands will be calculated in a in a certain symmetry direction uh, you can just know uh, by gamma l w x points how can we get these points i will later uh, make you able to learn that one as well in this video uh, the second step is bands dot in running with the pw.x executable the third step is the post processing of these calculated bands. So that is the bands.pp.in file and at last we will plot these uh, post processed bands. So this is this, this is the uh, way to calculate the band structure with smearing in scf.in file. Uh, the next method that is the uh, without smearing in scf.in file we are not going to mention about the occupation uh, in scf.in file. Uh, this method usually involves an additional step of NSCF calculation, non-self-consistent calculations. And uh, so basically these, these calculations are completed in five steps. That is the SCF.in file, first run uh, without smearing and NSCF file. Then uh, third one is the bands.in and fourth one is the similar to previous one that is bands.post processing and at the end plot band.in. So, uh, plot band dot in can be done with uh, with plot band dot x program, uh, and we can also plot uh, these bands according to our own uh, required software or plotting tool like origin, uh, XM grays, or uh, you can simply plot it in uh, GNU plot. So these are uh, the two methods, and with different sub steps. Uh, with smearing and without smearing. So let's come to the uh, execution of these steps one by one. So now we are going to uh, check the effect of smearing uh, for the both both cases whether we have applied the smearing in SCF.in file or not. What will be the effect of smearing in this uh, case? If you just see uh, the SCF.in file we have prepared the SCF.in file as it is shown. Uh, yes, the cutoff energy for wave functions and cutoff density and the K points are in automatic format with 12 cross 12 cross 12 grid. So you can see that no occupation is provided at the moment. And also the number of bands are also commented. So first of all, we will run this file and we will check what will happen with in this case so simply applying the command uh, you should remember that the uh, quantum espresso on current pc has installed in parallel so, so that's why uh, the mpi run uh, is applied to use the eight processors if you have uh, not installed your quantum espresso uh, in parallel version so so you you should avoid this command you just simply provide the uh, path of the bin folder to access the bw.x executable so in this case we have used eight cores and scf.in file is running at the moment uh, we will check that what what are the effects of uh, summating and 
okay let's check the scf dot out file you can simply see that the number of electrons are eight which are which are there to present in the cone sham states are four it means two electrons in in one state so what will we get we get the job done message over here and you can see that the highest occupied level is uh, given by this case remember that it is the case when we have switched off the number of bands as well as the smearing so for this case we got file as so now if we if we switch on the number of bands we, we, we must equate we must equate the number of electrons to the number of consham states so for that we have to provide the number of bands that is eight and now again we should run this and for this case i am going to rename it with n band yes okay now this file is running in which we have provided the n band index 8 so the the n band is provided in scf and we will get a new scf dot out file as it is shown now you can see that eight electrons are distributed in eight cone sham states so what we have got at the end just job done message as well as the as the highest occupied level as well as the lowest unoccupied level in this case you will get the difference of these two levels to get the band gap for the current case so now now what will happen if we switch on the smearing for the third case and occupation is smearing and smearing type it's gaussian and with smearing value represented by d gauss with 0 0.005 so in quantum espresso we have four options of smearing just gaussian is given here you can also write it as here meth vessel paxton and marzari vanderbilt and also the fermi dirac so our current tutorial we are going to use the smearing uh, as gaussian so now you can see that n band as well as the occupation is on and smearing is provided here so we will run it again with smear dot out so we will get we will see that what difference will it create at the end of scf dot smear dot out file okay it is completed and we can see that you can see that the you can see that number of electrons and number of cone sham states are equal and at the end we got the job done message and the fermi value the fermi energy as given as 6.1317 electron so so what will we get in case we have switched on both the n band as well as the smearing in our scf dot in file we got the fermi energy value in our scf dot out file and if we just switch on the n band uh, or we have provided the correct number of bands so we got both the uh, highest occupied and lowest unoccupied energy levels For, by the difference of these two levels we may get the uh, band gap and in case we have switched off both n band and uh, i should say smearing we got uh, nothing but the highest occupied energy level only so this is important importance of smearing or the effect of smearing so for the current case to this tutorial to proceed we will go without the smearing effect that is we will not we will not put the smearing but just the n band 
so we have switched off this mirroring by commenting this and we will uh, rerun uh, we have already run it so should simply run it again so the next file is nsf nsef dot in in nsef dot in we just provide n band as in nsef dot in but the occupation as tetrahedra so that will be the difference from this and verbosity is said to be high to print the bands and the k grid is more denser more dense than the SCF dot in file. So so simply we get it here these are the bands we got job done and highest and lowest occupied energy states. So now we will run the nsef file and it will take some time because grid is more dense so nsef file is uh, completed successfully and we will get nsef dot out file you can simply see that n bands and on some states are equal and at the end we will get the value of our energy so now next is the bands dot in which is very important file to be run here which is it is similar to the one that is the SEF but thus changing the switch SEF by bands so as the uh, K points K points are provided here in crystal B formats and uh, not the automatic format so we are going to use these six K points with these coordinates the important question is that how how can we get these uh, points and also these uh, directions which directions so the answer to this question is simply is that we just have to open the x Christian. if you have not installed x Christian on your computer just apply simply sudo apt get install x Christian, and you will see that the installation of x Christian has been started because it is showing that x Christian is already the newest version if you have not installed the installation will be initiated so now simply opening the scf.in file in x Christian, we may get our desired points this we do not uh, reduce the dimensionality because we are working in 3d so this is our unit cell of silicon we will check the symbols on just go into the tools and select the k path yes we have got this uh, primitive brilliant zone in 3d which is in reciprocal lattice of course so by initial look of this uh, we can see that there are four hexagons but in actual the number of hexagons in this primitive unit cell are brilliant zone there are eight hexagons and six squares there from either direction you can see that there are two consecutive hexagons separated by a square you can rotate it and check it from either side there are two consecutive hexagons and after that there is a square so this symmetry symmetry directions can be selected starting from this central red point which is the center of brilliant zone named as gamma and the center of this hexagon will always be termed as L point and the center of square will be termed as X point the there is a common line between two consecutive hexagons like that and and this consecutive line this co common line I should say the common line 
uh, between two hexagons has a central point as well as a corner point attached with the square. So the central point of this common line between two hexagon will be termed as K and the corner point of this common line attached to the square will be termed as W. So these basically these five distinct points will represent the face centered cube in reciprocal lattice. So for all the band structure calculations you must cover these five points. Uh, the direction is totally uh, depends on your desire you can select your preferred direction gamma to gamma or x starting from x. So for the current case we have just started it from w and ended on, ended on k. So the coordinates are selected over here, put the weight of these uh, coordinates, this is, this is actually the weight of these uh, points between two symmetry directions. So now we have to run the bands dot in file with with the help of pw dot x executable. pw dot x executable. Yes. You will see that. And after that we will simply run the post processing with the help of bands.x executable. So it is important to note the Fermi energy which is the 6.131355 because here we have to provide it. In plot band dot in file. So bands calculation are in process and we can simply wait for the completion of these calculations. So band calculation has completed and after that we have to simply run the band.x executable and the file name bands.pp.in the post processing files pp.out it will generate three files with the extension .dat and .gnu dot wrap dot gnu file can directly be plotted in xm grace origin or gnu plot and this file will be read for the plot further plot in the plot band dot in you can see that so we simply go in and call it the plot band.x executable make sure you should run it on a single core and also with minus INP for input file is not recommended you should use this bracket angle bracket plot band dot in and plot band dot out you will see that it has the it has generated the band structure of silicon you can see that